Good morning, everyone. It is a pleasure and a privilege to welcome you all to this year's MIME. I would like to invite our head girl, Dia Bhatnagar, to welcome and address the gathering for today's virtual event. But before that, let us all come together to invoke the blessings of the Almighty with a stroth apart. The true sign of intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination. That was Einstein's opinion about intelligence. What is yours? Good morning. I'm pleased to extend a warm welcome to you on behalf of Sun City School for the virtual inter-school competition, MIME. We are honored by the gracious presence of our esteemed judges for the competition and our respected school director, Ms. Rupa Chakravarti. We would like to express our heartfelt gratitude to all the participating schools for joining us in this endeavor today. We are joined by SD Adarsh Vidyalay, Lotus Valley International School, Gurugram, Lotus Valley International School, Noida, Bluebells Public School, Bluebells Model School, Sector 4, Gyan Devi Public School, Scottish High International School, DPS, Sushant Lok, DPS, Sector 45, Pal Bharti Public School, Manasar, GD Goenka Public School, Sector 48, Sun City School, Sector 37D, Amity International School, Sector 43, St. PBN Public School, DAV Public School, Sector 14, DAV Public School, Sector 49, and DAV Public School, Pushpanjali Enclave. MIME is an affirmation of a belief in the special and different abilities possessed by each human being. Its understanding creates the foundation for respecting the diversity that can be observed in each unique individual. We are delighted to present a celebration of talents to you in today's inter-school competition. MIME. India is known for its rich heritage and cultural legacy. Performing arts like classical dance are an integral part of the Indian culture. We also have a long history of dance and music. We are very fortunate to have this opportunity to present our country's glory through today's event, presenting the Krishna Vandana dance, a devotional invocation of Lord Krishna in Manipuri classical and Kathak style. The choreography integrates the two classical dances to create a new aesthetic style. Let's glorify the Lord Almighty through the graceful and spiritual Krishna Vandana dance. 
Today's event explores the different facets of human intelligence and recognizes its multifarious nature. Let us now delve deeper into the theory of multiple intelligences with our school head boy. Good morning, everyone. This inter-school competition is based on the theory of multiple intelligences developed in 1983 by Dr. Howard Gardner was a professor of education at Harvard University at the time. Gardner expanded the concept of intelligence and outlined several distinct types of intellectual competencies an individual could possess. So intelligence was not something that could be measured or assessed simply by virtue of an IQ test, as was the norm at the time. It was something much more complex and included verbal, linguistic, logical, musical, rhythmic, visual, spatial, kinesthetic, naturalistic, interpersonal, and intrapersonal intelligence. According to him, different intelligences usually work in combination with one or more being the dominant ones. Verbal linguistic intelligence enables people to communicate through language. Its development depends on activities such as listening, speaking, reading, 
and writing. The logical mathematical intelligence is related to one's ability to reason, solve problems, and learn using numbers, as well as the ability to analyze relationships between causes and effects. Individuals with musical rhythmic intelligence recognize tonal patterns in music more instinctively than others. They are sensitive to sounds and can become adept in creating music. People with bodily kinesthetic intelligence can learn more easily by doing, exploring and discovering as opposed to learning by watching something or listening. Spatial intelligence deals with spatial judgment and the ability to visualize with the mind's eye. Interpersonal intelligence enable one to develop qualities like empathy and cooperation. Individuals with this intelligence are good at forming as well as maintaining good relationships with others. Intrapersonal intelligence enables a person to look within and comprehend themselves as well as their thoughts and emotions clearly. Self-discipline, self-motivation, and understanding of human psychology are some of the natural results of this intelligence. People with naturalistic intelligence feel close to nature and are sensitive towards it. They appreciate nature and can identify and classify the elements in the environment. We are all different from each other with respect to our blend of intelligences. But we must remember that each intelligence can be enhanced through targeted developmental activities. This theory can be used to achieve holistic development by nurturing the different kinds of intelligences. Thank you. Thank you for that enlightening presentation, Arun. From exploring the depths of the human brain, to bringing about improvements in the ways of man, let us now gain some insight about the sustainable development goals set by the United Nations with our head coach. Good morning to one and all present here. Today, I, Tia Bhartnagar, am here to talk about the sustainable development goals. These are 17 interlinked global goals that 195 countries unanimously agreed upon to be a blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. Here are the 17 goals. Some of them include no poverty, zero hunger, quality education, gender equality, and of course, partnership for the goals. Now you might wonder, what about the history of these goals? Well, here's a timeline. In June 1992, 178 countries adopted Agenda 21, which eventually led to the formation of the eight MDGs, Millennium, development goals in 2000. And then finally, we came up with the 17 SDGs at the UN Sustainable Development Summit in September 2015. That was the history. But what is the focus of the SDGs? Well, the SDGs focus on the five Ps. First, people to end poverty and hunger and bring about equality and a healthy environment. Second, planet to protect the planet from degradation for the future generations. Third, prosperity, to ensure a prosperous life and enjoy progress in harmony with nature. Fourth, peace, to foster peaceful and inclusive societies. And last but not least, partnership, which was determined to mobilize the means required to implement this agenda. Now you might think, what's the point of learning all this? And you're right, there's no point just learning about it. It is time to implement these goals. And who's better to implement them than us? In Sun City School, it is an integral part of our curriculum. By that, I mean that we try to integrate these goals in things like research projects, holiday homework, artworks, etc. 
He has started initiatives and done multiple workshops with collaborative organizations. They hold discussions on sustainable development goals to create awareness, not just in classrooms, but in assemblies and functions as well. Every subject taught highlights an underlying SDG. As students, we also promote this course in our homes. My dad is now well-versed in the 17 goals because of the multiple dinner table conversations we have had. It is not time to put our foot forward. As Dan Shetman rightly said, sustainable development requires human ingenuity. People are the most important resource. Thank you and have a great day ahead. After that wonderful presentation on the SDGs by our school head girl, let us find out about how the day's competitions have been organized. The participants have been divided into different groups on the basis of their classes. Group 1 has participants from classes 10 and 11. Group 2 has participants from classes 8 and 9. Group 3 has participants from classes 6 and 7. And Group 4 has participants from classes 4 and 5. One participant from each group will take part in all the competitions for the MIME ACE Trophy. MIME includes five competitions. The first one is named Making Connections, and it's aimed at stimulating and challenging students' verbal linguistic, interpersonal, and interpersonal intelligence. Participants can present their speeches or debates in Hindi or English as per their convenience. Quiche art involving the use of visual, spatial, naturalistic, and verbal linguistic intelligence is the name of our second event today. Students worked on SDGs related theme based artwork and thought of suitable slogans for them. The next event is named Design Thinking, which involves the use of naturalistic, logical, linguistic, and musical intelligence. The championship will require participants to focus on any one out of a set of five predetermined sustainable development goals and use the design thinking paradigm to address a local, national or international challenge. The fourth event named Agility nurtures and assesses students' kinesthetic and naturalistic intelligence. Students had the option to choose from dance, yoga, aerobics or gymnastics, and the performance was based on the theme SDG Life on Land. The fifth event named VUCA World, in which VUCA stands for volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity, is based on logical and verbal linguistic intelligence. Each contestant will solve a given set of questions using their problem solving and analytical skills to reach the treasure. This event showcases the SDG Life on Land. The students will be participating in two events, Making Connections and VUCA World, today as the competitions Quiche Art, Design Thinking and Agility have already been conducted. After the two competitions today, we will see you again in our valedictory ceremony, which includes the prize distribution at 4.30 today. Now let us gain some knowledge about the respected judges for the competition. Hi everyone, I'm Saleh Singh. How are you? Is it cold in Delhi? Here, we are wilting under the heat. At 28 degrees, our skin burns. So before I tell you about oratorical skill, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am the publications lead for the Royal Australasian College of Surgeons. Wondering what that means? It means I work with surgeons, get to interview them, write about the awesome research and the work that they're doing. And I bring out a 70 page bi-monthly magazine. I also do the annual report, which basically means I talk, write and talk about what the organization has achieved over the past financial year. Outside of my paid work, I run a webcast called Chai Chat and Community, where I discuss trending topical matters with subject matter experts. I love what I do. I am also the president of Indian Care, which looks up to vulnerable Indians in Victoria and in Melbourne. I am the director of Peace Meals, 
where we encourage refugees and asylum seekers to break bread with established Australians. Sometimes these dinners land refugees into good jobs. Sometimes it's just knowing a local person and not feeling too lost. All my jobs are very exciting. It keeps me busy and it also ensures that I get out of bed every morning with a smile on my face. Now to oratorical skills. Firstly, always remember it is not about winning but participation and practice makes it perfect. If you are doing public speaking for the first time, you're understandably nervous and that is okay. You will get better each time. When I look at my first webcast to what I'm doing now and you know, talking to you about it, I see a marked and improved change. So here are some pointers. Always look directly at your audience. People have very little attention span in this day of social media. So the most important information first, your subject and what you want to convey. Do you know the CRIS principle? Keep it short and sweet. Clear, simple words like you're explaining to a child without being condescending and making the other person feel that they don't understand. Data is your best friend. Always back your arguments with numbers. Lastly, have fun. Remember, someone somewhere wishes they can be like you. It takes a lot of courage to stand up and speak. So good luck all. I really am looking forward to hearing the debates. Best of luck and the, may the best person win. Thank you and see you guys soon. We are grateful for the August presence of our esteemed judges in today's event. Ms. Saleha Singh, a communications professional based in Melbourne with more than 20 years of experience, and Mr. Manvendra Prasad, a financial services professional turned public policy advisor and author, will be judging the event making connections. Mr. Atsuko Shivaku, the president of the Japan Art Mal Foundation, Mr. Ashok Mehengi, director at the Bellevue Education Group UK, and Ms. Anjali Neja, who is currently working with the UN World Food Programme, will be judging kitsch art. Design thinking will be judged by Mr. Keshav Gupta, the founder of the Dice Foundation, which aims at empowering individuals, educational institutions and organizations, and Ms. Swati Ganguly, founder directors of Wana Technologies. Ms. Ganguly is a Google certified trainer, a Microsoft Innovative Educator trainer, and has been awarded the Woman Entrepreneur of the Year Award 2019 by the All India Council for Robotics and Automation. Ms. Mansi Sadana, an actor, performer, choreographer, and teacher, and Ms. Sharmishta Malik, director of Creative Rhythm, who is a silver medalist in Bharatnatyam from the Prayag Sangeet Samiti, are the judges for agility. Each group is now requested to proceed to the respective team for their events, along with the respective teacher in charge. Thank you and best wishes to all the participants.